Good morning, everyone. I'm on the mountain today. Um, and I have my new book with me, Butterfly Voyage. Um, and I just want to thank everyone who has already bought a copy. Thank you for buying a copy. Thank you for supporting my work. Um, and those who have bought it and are waiting to receive it or are reading it at the moment, I thought I would just um, explain explain a few things or give you some background um, on the book. And so the first um, the first first thing is creatively um, when I first wrote this book or creative challenges I should say when I first wrote this book none of the poems were titled um, and the reason is that I didn't want them to have titles because they weren't really I, they weren't necessarily I didn't write them to be standalone poems although they can be read and, and understood or appreciated as standalone poems when I wrote them they were written in a sequence to tell a specific story to tell the story of this of this book of this butterfly voyage um, of course when I came to putting the book into print form or putting the book together um, I had a huge problem there because it's not it's not a novel, um, although it does tell a story and it does use different storytelling devices um, like poems, messages um, and, and short stories. It is not a novel, so I couldn't, it still has to be laid out like a poetry book. Um, so my main challenge was how do I, how do I, how do I do a table of contents for, for a, I think there's 89 poems, 89, 89 poems that don't have a title. So obviously I had to get creative and um, find a way to create a table of contents without trying to, without compromising my, my original need to not have a title. So what I did was I came up with titles for for the table of contents but instead of instead of um, setting out the titles on you know at the start of the poem like you would for any other book what I did was I embedded the title within the poem so it's not really a title it's almost like a um, it's like a, a line that stands out in the poem so you'll see you go through the book none of them have titles on the top you have to you have to read through the poem to find to find the embedded title um, so there's one there's another one some of them are near the top some are in the middle some are at the end um, so that was one creative challenge that I I think I overcame pretty well and I quite like the way it looks now it's um because it is more like it is more like a storybook, which is which is what I wanted it to look like, instead of a rigid, you know, title of a poem. Poem. I didn't want it to look like that, so it kind of flows, which is good. So that's one aspect of the book. Um, the other aspect of the book is the cryptic messages. So I've had a couple of people um, say they really like. They really like the concept, right? This concept of the fact that there's this cryptic poem that has an urgent message and um, it's led me on this journey. It's like I've made it all up. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. It's not a concept. It really did happen. Um, this was, I had this first poem message um, that led me eventually led me on this long journey the book tells you the story um, and there are t there are 12 of those cryptic messages all together um, and 
within the cryptic messages there are you will see in some mostly in the cryptic messages but also in some of the poems you will see um, an end note number so let me just find one here so here is here's a normal poem um, there's a word there I you and it has a little number next to it and you will find that there are end notes at the end they're called butterfly voyage end notes and at the end of the book um, there are a series of notes that explains what what the word means or in the case of the spirits the cryptic messages there are references that i have tried to figure out and um you know this is this is what i think they mean but there are there are still many that that are you know left they're still open to interpretation and and i'll probably still find out um in time so there's a spirit message spirit message uh, nine and there's a there's a phrase that's obviously I didn't know at the time and I had to look up and make sense of so um, those spirit butterfly voyage end notes at the end of the book that is what they are they will explain all of those little numbered references give you some insight into what those things mean um, what else can I tell you um, I think that's the main thing really so it's not a normal poetry book it does tell a story and um, yes so thank you to everybody who has bought it already and um, those who are intrigued to find out more I hope you also go and buy a copy um, and I will just read, I'm just going to read a few, a few, pro, a few poems from the first section. You'll probably have to go and watch this on my YouTube channel because, um, yeah, this video is getting long, seven, seven minutes. Okay. When night falls, I walk like a ghost, haunted by the past. When my toes meet the roots of the forest, I see a rusted cage, the trappings of survival. And if I look around, it's because there's people around. Probably think I'm nuts. On a blue window, I leave smudges of fear. Three bars of heat between my knees and the medicine man's feet. IU is inside, swallowed like semen. I hear chains rattle, sea fingers point at me, the marked woman before her burning, before her ceremony, before her power runs out, before it's renewed, before the virus mutates. I lose lashes at the thought of this misfit being burned at the stake, but it must be killed. Channel me before I'm lost, stamp like an animal, shift the mountain, you warrior queen, you mother of life. Get out, I tell you, get out. You liar of likeness. You've overstayed your welcome. I'm shutting off the power, taking away your bed. Tonight we go to war. I don't want you anymore. I will do this thing, this awful thing, to extract your poison from me. I want to run into the woods naked, take the trees for lovers plunge my roots into earth, rub my skin against moss and bark, like a fairy awakening to magic in her wings. Instead, I am a girl again, with burn marks on my wrist. They sting like a, like a lance searing flesh. Is this what I've done to myself? A gentle spirit turned malevolent. I run into the woods to escape the funeral in my head and bargain with a raven to swap places. I trust her advice by now. P 
pin the beginnings of a crimson paper trail, shorthand and long. I bleed easier through ink, the bottomless well of a subterranean heart. Outside my breath turns to smoke as I sacrifice each syllable to rosemary flames. I watch the embers dance up into the atmosphere, visceral confessions purged in the fire. Witness them space travel, no longer captive within my Sahasrara, Ajna, Visuddha, Anahata, Manipura, Svadhisthana, Muladhara. When fire returns to the sky, I will know freedom. If you want to know what those references are, they are in the butterfly voyage in notes. Um, but they are the they are the chakras. Okay, and uh, I'll read one more. I dream of a white horse. It calls me to explore spiritual realms and dimensions through meditation, vision quests, and shamanic journeying before it fades to black and I am underground, a Victorian woman with heels and hat. I follow the voice of a little girl to a room lit with fireflies. On tiptoes, she carefully lifts a birdcage off a row of shelves, presses it into my chest. Behind the bars, a raven with thick wings and emerald eyes nudges my ribs with her beak and says, I have much to teach you about the language of freedom. So there you go, 12 minutes of me talking. I hope it didn't bore you. Um, so my new book, Butterfly Voyage, is available now. And um, happy Friday. <laughs>